Hey kids, welcome back to another science experiment video. Today I will be testing how um, solids, liquids, and gases shape and volume changes when you switch containers. Now look at this. It's a cup and another cup. Now we're going to be testing uh, solids with this bar of soap, which is in fact a solid. Now. If I put it in one cup, it maintains its shape and volume, and when I transfer it to the other cup, it still maintains that same shape and that same volume, with a little bit of deformation, of course. Now, if I take liquids, there, now, there's a liquid, you can clearly see its shape and its volume. Now when I transfer it to the other cup, oh, it changed its shape, but it did not change its volume. So, learn something new every day. Now, where's my balloon? Okay, now let's take our air and let's put it in the cup. Okay, it's, it's, I think it's in the cup. Now let's try to transfer it to the other cup. I don't think it transferred. See, that's because the air already transferred to the rest of the air. And that's why it did not maintain its shape, nor did it maintain its volume. In fact, it's gone. If I can't get it back. I can try to get it back, but I probably won't succeed. Hey! Now, for the second part of the experiment, we're going to test how these liquids and solids and gases work. Now, I have this bar of soap, and in the, we're gonna see if I can deform it. Now, it seems that I can't. It's a very solid bar of soap, because I squeeze very hard, and I cannot deform it, because it's a bar of soap. Now for our second experiment, we're going to need this. It's a syringe. It's a very big syringe, in fact. Now after taking some of the water and putting it inside of the syringe, now the instrument requires me to put 3.5 milliliters inside of the syringe. But this is a very big syringe, so I'm going to put 35 for a more accurate reading or a more accurate test. There. Now that we have 35 milliliters of water inside of the syringe, I'm going to cover the other end and then compress, or at least try to compress. Now from what I've learned in the activity before, liquids do not, cannot compress. They cannot compress. No matter how hard you try, they will not compress because the atoms are already as close to each other as they can be. Now, actually, it looks like it is a possibility for it to compress, because if you form it into a singularity, theoretically, it can compress. But only at a at the collapse of a dying star. A very big one, mind you. Fun fact, you learned something new. Now we're going to do that test again. The instructions for our third part of the experiment is to grab another syringe, open it, and cover it slowly. There, that's it, I covered it slowly. But the instructions were slightly more unclear compared to the other experiments, which is why um, you could interpret it as you open it. Like, because you covered, like say, you could cover it with your finger. You open it, and then you cover it slowly. That's a cool way to interpret it, but the most practical way to understand how he means is by opening it like this, and then slowly pushing it in further, and pushing the air out this end. Now, of course, we all know how syringes work. The air is inside, and once you push it, you close the syringe, you compress the air on the inside slightly, 
forcing it to come out of the other end. See? I learned that because I'm a great learner and you should be too. Now for the last part of our whole exploration here. So we will be trying to draw the molecular particles of solids, liquids, and gases. Now for solids, it's quite simple. They do not like to move unless forced to. They are just packed together in a simple state, all clumped in a box, or what you could say is, not a box of course, but they are like this. They do not um, move apart. They have, they're stuck together and will not move apart unless you really force them to with like more particles that are also stuck together even better in this yes okay now for liquids liquids are yeah so it's ha it has it like a s um a constant shape now this for liquids they do not have a constant shape they are still stuck together as well as the solids are, they do not want to come apart, but they still have free movement, and they want to, and their shape can change. So it looks something like this. It's just completely random, all over the place, and like that so liquids they want to stay together but they have free movement which means that their density stays constant but their shape does not now um, we will be trying to do gases I accidentally dropped my pen we have this so these are the gas particles or what you could say are the molecules I meant these are the gas molecules so they stay apart because when they hit each other they simply just bounce off that's how they interact they just bounce off and go elsewhere because they weirdly enough they want to um, they expand and compress based on how much of um, that certain gas there is in a container. So, if I were to have a, say, a balloon with a little bit of gas, the balloon would not expand much, but then it would still expand because the gas wants to push away because these are hitting each other and pushing out. But if I have a balloon with a lot of gas, the, the d more gas particles, which means um, more uh, deviation, which means they go out more, and there's more interaction between them, and they don't... More gas means more balloon, more volume. More volume means balloon gets bigger, and that's how I do science. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. I meant thank you for watching.